Entertainment Weekly, anything with Mossy on the cover, I read because we're good friends. That's like a, it's a Hollywood thing, whatever, we're both Asian. Hey guys, welcome back. We are live and ready to chat with the mastermind behind one of TV's best shows, besides ours, of course, and I know he agrees. Let's go over to Kevin with more, and I'll just keep reading my new Entertainment Weekly. They actually, in this, they show the new heroes, Kevin. I'm sorry, Olivia, did you, did you drop the name? I, I, I think it. No, um, I got it. It's Mossy. We're friends. Good. Whatever. It's All a right. big deal. Last fall, it seemed like nerds got mana from television heaven when heroes hit the airways. That's saying the least. A big budget show about superheroes handled with maturity, and it was on a major broadcast network. What, what more could you want? One year ago, heroes became a global pop culture phenomenon, proving that audiences would in fact tune in to a superhero drama. Of all the shows that premiered last season, Heroes quickly became the most watched newcomer, earning the series and Masioka Emmy nominations. Next week, the action picks up four months after the events of last season's finale. New characters will be introduced, along with a new deadly threat that looms, while the heroes attempt to rebuild their lives. From now on, we have to be entirely unextraordinary. According to creator and executive producer Tim Kring, this season will feature more revelations, multiple story arcs, and shorter breaks between the fall and spring volumes. Yatta! Will the success of the series continue to steamroll the competition? And now that the world's been saved, can we get the cheerleader back in her outfit already? Meaning what exactly? It's the loop. My guest tonight is the creator and executive producer of Heroes, Mr. Tim Kring. Tim, welcome back to the old attack of the show. Thanks, Kevin. A, a slightly different tale this time here on the set, because you know you were here like a year ago, and we were saying, "Come on, this this Heroes thing." Like we know it's we know it's big in the geek community, but did even I mean, did you even know this show was going to appeal to people who weren't into sci-fi or comic books at that time? Uh, no, I had no idea. <laughs> I mean, the, the truth is, when you set out to do a show like this, you you kind of hope that it's a big tent idea that everybody's going to like. But sure. um, we knew we had kind of a core group there. But the idea was to, to make it appealing to, to everybody else, to the average TV viewer. And so by keeping it as character-based as we could and, uh, and keeping the storytelling as compelling as possible, we just thought we would hopefully, you know, grab all, all these other viewers. Oh, and, you did. and sure and, enough, we did. And not just in the States. I mean, this is a worldwide thing, right? I mean, you guys yeah. recently were out promoting heroes across the globe. It's now a worldwide phenomenon. I guess we have sold in 150 different territories. Wow. And, and this, as you said, we just did a world tour where we went to seven different uh, cities around the world. Jeez. So uh, heroes fever everywhere. But and before we get to back to the series, how's Hayden without me? Is she lonely? Is she has she mentioned me at all? Hayden misses you on a daily basis. That's what I wanted to hear. Okay, I'll I'll get a new BlackBerry line from you. For some reason, it got changed. I don't get that. But season one ended. I look. I thoroughly enjoyed the ride. I'm the biggest fanboy out there. But some of the fans were frustrated by the finale, and I wanted to ask you, Tim. Like, why why do you think they might have actually felt that way? Well, you know, uh, it, we learned some really important lessons last year. One was to try and not carry as much story for an entire season. We did 23 episodes last year, and it was basically one giant story. And, and mm -hmm. the problem is with that kind of storytelling is you get almost, almost anything that builds for that long is, is, is a high bar to, to kind of um, overcome in terms of uh, audience expectation. So this year, we're trying to, uh, to answer that by doing what we call you know, these volumes, shorter volumes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, volume one was 23 episodes long. It was last season. Volume two will be 11, 11 episodes long and, and uh, you know, before Christmas. And there may be as many as two more volumes this season. Um, sure. So that's one of the, the, you know, one of the, one of the things we really learned. Right. And what I, what I love about the show is that in addition to this giant story arc that you did tell in season one, was that you guys are you're constantly evolving and you'll answer a question and then you ask 12 more in a single episode. And I feel that as a viewer, if I tune in next week, I'm going to get answers. You're not just going to dangle those keys right, for right. 24 episodes. I mean, is, is, that, is that something that you, you felt worked for season one? You're going to bring that to season two? Absolutely. We were really conscious on the show of not being a show that frustrated viewers along the way. Um, and we figured, you know, on our show, no, no answer is that precious that we can't give it up because there's always, as you said, 12 more questions along the way. Right. And it just makes for a really dynamic uh, 
kind of uh, storytelling and also makes it available, as you said, for people to jump on board the train along the way as opposed to having, you know, feeling like they've missed so much that they can't start right. watching. It's not the express train to Confusion Town. There's 12 it's stops along the way and, and you're going to take us through each one. And, and, you know, we had the benefit of coming along after other shows that have, where we've been able to see the mistakes of, uh, and, and the pitfalls of this kind of storytelling. And now laugh that they're all in your shadow, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you've eclipsed every other show on television. Uh, uh, you know, not yet. But it's okay to point yeah. and laugh. I think, I think you should. Now, let's talk about season two, Tim, because we, we want to know, how does this thing start? Who are the new characters? What are we going to see when we tune in next week? Um, well, we start the season with uh, an episode called Four Months Later. So we, we drop into our sh story literally four months after where the season finale ended. So in some ways, you'll be... Some of the stories will be very confusing. I say, well, why am I here and how, mm. how did we get here? Which is part of the fun of it because in the next several episodes, you'll start to put those pieces together as to why you are, uh, you know, how that character ended up there. Other characters, it's going to be easier to, to, to jump on. Um, this uh, volume is called Generations. And last year, we kind of hinted at and you got to meet this sort of other generation of people out there represented by George Takei's character right. and Petrelli's mother. These heroes you know. aren't just an isolated modern incident perhaps. Right. This there has been going this, on for years and years in the there past. There was this other generation and the theme of this next volume of Generations is basically the, the idea of the sins of the parents visited upon oh. uh, the, the children. Also another theme for us this early on is last year we saw ordinary people become extraordinary. And now, in a way, it's sort of how do you, if you're extraordinary, how do you go back to being ordinary? Oh, okay. Those are two, two things. It's something I struggle with daily, exactly. to be honest. So I'd love to tune in for answers on that alone. We also have a bunch of new characters, um, you know, a handful of new characters. And so, uh, you know, we're going to be un unfolding those over the first uh, four or five episodes. Oh, cool. get so we're meeting them right away. We don't have to get halfway into this new season to see some fresh faces. Right. It start, the first episode back starts with the introduction of a major new character. Right. All right, now next year, i got to ask about Origins, because I know Heroes spinning off. It's going to be a, a six-episode miniseries. What can yeah. viewers look forward to there? You know, the idea behind it was to take the premise of Heroes that this is happening all over the world with people, you know, that these, these, these characters are popping up in various places, and to do sort of a one-off storyline um, for, uh, you know, a character that we would introduce in, in, in each episode and do it in a kind of... Um, you know, closed-ended uh, way so that it doesn't continue on to the next episode, but each one has a kind of a uh, cautionary tale or a morality tale attached to it. In some ways, it kind of harkens back to the old Rod Serling storytelling of Twilight Zone and that, that kind of thing. And we're, do, we're trying to use um, some very, uh, you know, unique writers and, mm -hmm. and very And some good very directors unique directors as well, right? I know Kevin Smith is in there for the first episode. Exactly, and he's both writing and directing, um, as is uh, Eli Roth, who, uh, I don't know if, you know, your oh, fans we, are Oh, Eli's been on a, a handful of times, yeah, so I so imagine so Heroes' body parts are falling off in right. a crazy foreign country at some point. We just, uh, we just uh, hooked up with uh, Michael Doherty, who's a screenwriter for uh, Superman, uh, and uh, Superman, wait, which one? Superman returns I guess uh, and um, and you know two of the X-Men movies and uh, and also uh, John August is, is writing an episode for us he did uh, Big Fish and Go and so is there gonna be so a consistent feeling to origins or is each episode going to have that unique flavor because you're bringing so many unique artists to the table you know the idea is to bring a unique voice to each episode um, that's part of the fun of it so you get to see a slight different flavor and, and it's up to me as the producer of the show to infuse it with a kind of world that feels familiar you know what what really helps with that is the way it's shot and the way it's scored and um, you know some of the themes that we weave through in, in the same way that heroes has each episode is kind of strung together by by music that people associate with the show sure um, it'll have it'll have a sense of, of being you know a whole but People will want to watch it to see what Kevin Smith's take on, on it will be. Of course. Well, Tim, we absolutely love the world that you've created, and we can't thank you enough for coming on to talk about it. And, and again, a lot. season three, I'll have my cell phone charged. Do you want to make it happen? I'm sorry it fell through I'll, I'll for the next we'll, one. We'll but. figure it out, but thanks, man. <laughs> All right, appreciate it, Tim. All right. All right, the second season of Heroes premieres on NBC next week. I'm not going to tell you to tune in because I know you've already season passed it, so we'll talk then. <laughs>